everybody, welcome back. I thought I'd have a little sit down and just uh, update you on what's going on sort of behind the scenes. Uh, here with us, hurtling towards the end of term, uh, we're, we've got about a week and a half. I'm not sure exactly if I'm going to have to work that final weekend or not at this point, but the kids will be out of the school after their final exam, which is the end of not next week, but the week after. Uh, so we're getting super close now. Um, it's a long weekend next weekend, which when I saw the schedule, I was like, really? A long weekend right before the end of term. But I'm so tired right now, you guys. I'm really pleased it's here. I'm just drinking a little bit of juice today because uh, it's really hot outside. Oh. I had to run up to the shops to get a couple of things. Uh, we have a shop here on Compound. I've sh Actually, I've got... Probably somewhere on this channel, because I moved them all over. There's a little tour of the local compound shop, if you want to see it. But I had to go up earlier. And I stepped outside, and I just went, oh, God. And it was 36 degrees at 11 o'clock this morning, um, which is just below 100 Fahrenheit. And it had a real feel of 42 or 43, which equaled like 109 Fahrenheit. And I was just standing there like, oh, God, just kill me. <laughs> I'm not built for this, all right? So I, w I went and did that this morning, but it's good to be weekend. It's good to be weekend. I'm not sure that's English, but I'm going to leave it in. It feels good that it's the weekend because it's been very tiring at school. End of term is always hectic. Uh Excuse the coughing. Um, I was solidly sick for three weeks and now I feel more like myself, but I'm still a little bit congested and the cough just won't leave me. <laughs> so we're going with it. It might be partly allergies potentially as well, like it's getting kind of dusty. We're expecting a couple of days of rain and they said from the 1st of July, it'll really start getting hotter for a summer. And I was like, it's 109, man. Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, there has at least, I saw a, a news report that there's been a ban put on uh, outdoor labourers working in the middle of the day, which is at least something. But yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty intense over here and it's going to be in the next place as well. I'm doing a short video home, but I'm staying in the middle of a short video home. Jesus Christ, my brain. This isn't even coffee, but we're going to drink something and see if it helps. I'm doing a short trip home. And then I'm flying from the UK. Um, I don't think my school would have been weird about it, but I didn't want to stay all the way up to the end of August here because they've got to get a new teacher into my apartment. So I'm leaving um, between early to mid-August. Then I'm going to the UK for a week. And then I'm flying from the UK because I didn't want there to be a problem later where you get a, a ticket from your point of origin, right? But if my point of origin ends up being Saudi, then they go, oh, no, that's not where you came from. I don't think this school would at all. They've been very reasonable, but I've been in schools that have turned out to be less reasonable before. So, so it really depends how much they are. No, the rule is the rule. When I was in the Far East, my first ever job in Japan, it was very much the rule is the rule. Like I wanted to go somewhere after... Uh, when I was flying back from Japan, I wanted to fly via somewhere and do a holiday. And so I just asked, can I change my ticket? And then I'll just pay like the hopper back home. And they were like, no, point of origin. Even though it would have been cheaper for them. Like in Japan, the rule is the rule is the rule. So it could have been partly cultural. It could have just been partly they didn't want to deal with it. So I don't know, but I, it's always stuck with me. So I'm extra careful. Anyway, getting ahead of myself. So... School has been pretty manic, but this week and last week I managed to finish off most of my administrative responsibilities. So for the report cards, all of the comments are done, all of the grades are in with the exception of the assessment grades. Because the next, we're in review time right now, they're going to have their first exam next week and they're going to finish their exams the week after. So I can't put those grades in until they do them, obviously. But we have a sign-off sheet that all teachers get at the end of the year, but final extras have to do a couple of extra things. But you have to do things like um, break down your classroom, so all the manipulatives have to be returned up to the resource room, all the books have to go back to the library, you have to take down your old boards and you have to um, put up the new ones for next year, and then you cover them in this plastic for the summer. It's like a massive... <laughs> 
not quite a garbage bag, not quite cling film, but something in between. And it just gets stapled over your boards to protect them from dust or dirt during the summer. Uh, dust particularly because they usually come in and do your walls and things. When the kids go, you have to drag all your tables and chairs into the centre of the room. So if they do any maintenance, they're out of the way. So there's a fair amount of stuff like that. Most of it, under usual circumstances, we would be in school two weeks after the kids leave. Final extras go a week earlier than everyone else. So it would be a, a week after. But this has been the first year that Saudi Arabia has been on three term system. So we're actually finishing our year a lot later than we usually do. Usually at this point, the kids will go sort of a couple of weeks ago and we would go a couple of weeks after that. We'd already be broken up and uh, we're not at the moment. So that's been fine because like I said, with the long weekends, it's been less burnout this year, having the shorter holidays, I prefer it. But it does mean that the school doesn't really know what to do with the end of term because this is the latest we've ever been. And with Ramadan um, moving back as well, uh, we had a big old holiday for Ramadan. We weren't quite sure how to deal with being in school for Ramadan because usually that was in the holidays. So the change, remember my frustration with the change of schedule there where we were just working on a shorter schedule with the same workload and it was mental. So, oh, the call to prayer has just started. Excuse the noise in the background, but some of you enjoy it. So if you enjoy it, enjoy it. Uh, what was I saying? So I'm glad we got the long weekend. We don't have much time left with them. I've started breaking down my room in as much as I can, but I really, really want to avoid being told I have to come in for that weekend. So I'm trying to get everything finished so that in the final week, I can just grade the exams, put the exam things in and get the final sign off for that. And that should be the last thing on my list. Then I can return it to HR because we're having a problem with the communication in my school, which is not a shock. It's one of the defining factors as to why I'm leaving the job. And how that's manifesting here is um, HR have told us, please finish it by the end of the week, which was the end of last week. Whereas the school is like, no, you have to go like for the display boards. You have to send them a mock up of what your display board's going to be so that they can approve you putting it out. And uh, we can't do that on the timeline that they're asking it to do and still be finished for that deadline. So it's been a lot of running around and trying to get things done while the kids were still here, which isn't usually the case, and trying to balance it so they're not sitting in like an empty classroom with nothing around and we can still teach. For So things like the IT, we have to return all of our um, technology. So that's things like the remote for the projector, like the, the smart board pen. But I need that to teach them. So <laughs> I'm like, um, I can't return this yet. This is going to be a last day deal. And I'm just trying to balance everything. But I'm seeing some progress now, which is nice. I think I've got myself into a good position to be able to get the necessary things done quite easily. So fingers crossed for that. But they always do seem to come up with things to do in the last week. So if I can get everything finished first, I should be able to stay on schedule. Knock wood. <laughs> Um, as you can, as I've mentioned, as you can probably hear, I'm uh, still coughing a little bit, but I'm feeling much better. I had put off, uh, I was going to go and get my second booster. Uh, according to Tawakana, which is like the health app that we have to show, um, it's a specifically a COVID app. Uh, I am not eligible for the next uh, booster yet because it's within certain age groups it's over 50s and it's within certain um, medical groups but when I go into Sahati which is another health app they have that's more generalized it's allowing me to book my appointment and I would really really like to get my second booster before I go uh, simply because I don't think they're offering them in the UK right now or I don't know availability in the UK right now and I don't know what the situation in the next place is going to be with me getting it. So I'd rather just do it before. And I have the option. So why not? Uh, I had to cancel it because I was so sick. I was like, I can't show up and be like, yeah, inject me. <clears throat> While I'm like antibiotics and stuff. I was like, give my body a fighting chance. So now I'm feeling a bit better. I'm probably, well, I have booked it for Tuesday. So fingers crossed I don't get worse again. <laughs> And uh, then I'll have the long weekend if I have any side effects. But to be honest, when it comes to the boosters, I've never really had side effects. My first initial vaccine, I had uh, a little bit of muscle ache when I woke up the next morning, which dissipated in about an hour or two, just you know, stretched out, it was fine. 
and then my second initial like shot uh, and half of the vaccine I had no side effects and the booster I had no side effects so fingers crossed the next booster will be okay um, I am getting this in shorter order than than the old one um, you waited I can't remember how long I waited between vaccine shots but I've only had the first booster for the last five months or so I got it done in January I think it was so I might get more effects, I don't know, but I'll give myself a long weekend just in case. But I'm excited to get it because it just means it's one more thing I can tick off. I don't have to worry about it later. You know, especially with me going to a new place, you never know how hard that's going to hit. I do also want to get a flu shot. I missed mine last year and because I keep getting sick right now, I think it would be helpful because my immune system is apparently not immune too well. So, um, other than that, my new school. I got some new information from the new school I'm going to that was actually really great. The more I hear about it, the more excited I am. Uh, they sent me a really good comprehensive document on sort of moving and living in the country. And it was like 45 pages long. It gave me a lot more details in terms of the practicalities of moving in, internet, phone, what's inside the apartments, what kind of apartment I'm getting. Uh, the only small disappointment I had, they have different types of accommodation on campus, yeah? And uh, the first two, which I'm guessing are a little on the smaller side, they include all the bills. And I assume because I was a single hire, I would get one of those. Um, I'm not, I'm getting one of the smaller villas, uh, which is lovely. I kind of don't want to complain because it's a nicer place to live. <laughs> But uh, the bills are not all included, but it does seem like the bill situation is handled better than they do here. Here I have a stipend for the bill, but um, especially when they up tax from 5 to 15% here in Saudi Arabia, which was meant to be temporary but hasn't come down yet, things got more expensive and they're pretty opaque when it comes to why you're being charged so much. So they give you 200 SAR uh, allowance for the bills. Yeah, they cover up to 200 SAR and then you pay the difference. So in the summer when I'm, when not I'm using it more because I, I use a lot of AC, but when it's working harder to maintain the temperature, it's more expensive. Of course it's more expensive. So the prices went up in general and I'm using it more in the summer so it doesn't always cover the cost that I have to pay the difference. Now I understand that, but like I said, Sometimes the difference in my usage doesn't make sense and they're not transparent at all with it and it doesn't roll over. So in the winter months um, in my new place, you use less than the allowance, but because you have like a year allowance that, get pay that gets paid out monthly, if you use less in the winter, the money can be applied to a summer bill where you used a bit more and then they calculate everything around um, April of the following year because it's the end of the tax year and you either get um, a refund on the stuff you didn't use because that money is yours or you pay the difference and the general consensus of people who live here is you use a little bit more than the allowance during the summer and you use less during the winter in general obviously it depends on, on uh, individuals use but it's it rolls over and the things don't roll over here. Sorry, this is a long explanation. But anyway, I was hoping to have all my bills included so that wasn't a concern I needed to have. It turns out I'm not gonna get that because apparently I was speaking to my buddy, which I'll talk about in a minute, and she said that the villas are two bedrooms, which would actually be really awesome, but because they're bigger, they don't include all the bills. My big concern with the bill isn't really the amount, it's the fact that with the world situation, you never know if it's gonna shoot up. And uh, I was just, I was thinking I would be more comfortable just knowing, okay, well, it will never change, you know, because it will be included, it won't matter. That won't be the case, but like I said, they seem to be a lot more reasonable in how they look at it. And apparently electricity is subsidized by the government, so it, it's not a concern as such. I just wanted to be protected against any surprises in the future, as it were, but like I said, not the end of the world. But speaking of my buddy, um, that was another thing I got. They pair you up with a person who arrived like maybe last year. They try to pair you up in different grade levels so it doesn't become like a work relationship where you're like, okay, what do I do here? Because you'll have people mentoring you for that within your own team. But it's really more, hey, can you tell me this? Do you know this? Like prepping for moving to the country. 
and uh, she actually lives in one of the villas as well so she said when she got home which isn't yet uh, she's having a pool day when she gets home she doesn't mind sending me a little video of her apartment and i was like yeah so um, hopefully i should get that video soon and be able to see but apparently uh, the basic setup for the villas tends to be two bedroom, one like ensuite bathroom, which is my apartment here is one bedroom, one ensuite, so I'd have an extra room, which is actually really cool. I could turn it maybe into a filming room, or um, like I could put my makeup counter, counter, <laughs> my makeup table in there and have it be like a dressing room. It'd be really cool. So I'm excited as to the possibilities of that. I think having a little filming area in a permanent place would be really cool. So we'll see how that goes. But the more I hear about it, the more excited I am. They were telling me details just like, okay, this is how the internet works. You have full access in the school, like on, the, on campus 24 seven. But if you want your own, these are the companies, which means I've been able to look online and kind of see what offers they have and what I'm kind of looking for. Cause I'm trying to put together like a mock-up of my budget to see what the costs are, because I'm trying to make some other financial plans that kind of revolve around that right now. And uh, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a planner. I, I like, I like like jumping on a plane and seeing what happens. But when it comes to moves like this, part of the excitement for me is being able to plan out, okay, I'm going to do this. And apparently Ikea opened in the country, which is pretty awesome. Um, there was a delay on it. And then, uh, and then it, it opened recently. So I'm excited. I can do the decorating and I can look around and get some things that are maybe less Generic seems a harsh term, but less standardized because obviously Ikea is Ikea wherever you go. It's the advantage of Ikea. But um, I like that. I like the feeling of moving because you get to do all that. And it's one of my favorite parts of settling into a new apartment is being able to get everything ready. And the school has just been really helpful with all the details. So very, very nice. Is there anything else I wanted to say? Let me just see. Uh, not really next weekend because it's a long weekend. I'll probably spend it starting to clear out this apartment. I don't want to get too ahead of myself because I'm pretty bad. Like once I get an idea in my head, I just start. But I am actually staying here for a while yet, probably six weeks or so. So <laughs> I don't want to get rid of everything, but I just want to start clearing bigger things out. And uh, yeah, that's all I really have to do. So I'll sell off most of the stuff that I have in this apartment came with the apartment. And some of the things have done their time and it will be done. But we have a little Facebook group within the compound that we can sell stuff off of and people just come to our apartment and grab it. So I've got a few pieces, a um, couple of pieces of furniture, like I've got a kitchen trolley, I've got like a, like a two-tier IKEA shoe rack thing. I've got some wall art I can sell. And uh, maybe the rug from in my bedroom is one of those indoor outdoor ones. So people might want that maybe. Um, and then I can just clean everything else. Everything else goes back to the school anyway. So they'll just come in, do a check and sign me off. And uh, then I'll be ready to go. I'm really excited. I'm hoping, like, I don't usually ship things. I usually just take a suitcase. The new school has said they will pay either for unaccompanied baggage if you want to ship things up to 30 kilos, maybe. I can't remember. I'll have to check. Or they'll just pay for another bag if you want. Um, I'll have to check the book that I can't remember exactly the details of how it works, but they're, they're willing to work with you either way. And once I've seen the inside of the apartment that my buddy sends me, I'll, um, I'll see if there's things I need. There was thought there's a laundry service on the compound, not compound, sorry, that's because I live here, uh, on the campus that you do get charged for whether you use it or not. It's, it's not very much at all. Um, but I might use that for bigger pieces like bedding that I don't really want hanging around and hanging up and stuff. But I would, if they don't include it, I'd like to get a washer. They did say that maintenance can help you with that uh, in terms of installing it and stuff. So bigger purchases when I get there will probably be a washer if it doesn't come with one and probably a TV of some kind, a smart TV of some kind. But other than that, the place comes fully furnished they've sent me a list of everything and it, it seems pretty well set up they also provide you with a little bag of groceries with you know like bread milk fruit tea coffee that kind of thing so that your uh, eggs so you're not starting with nothing when you first arrive and the school does give you a small advance i've got money saved i don't need it but rather than say no i don't want it and cause issues later i'll just take it so i've got some cash but they give you um I think it's about 400 pounds out of your salary in cash on arrival so that everyone has cash available 
when they first get there because I don't usually change money and um, I'll just use cards and things but if I'm coming to a brand new place and I don't know how common that is like Saudi Arabia it's gotten much better but particularly before the pandemic was a very cash-based society so I got a little when I got to the airport um, but it doesn't look like I'll need to do that when I when I show up here because they'll have it prepared for me so really nice feeling really helpful really excited ready for the end of term though i am i know that they drive me crazy sometimes i am going to miss the boys they've been a nice class and just just getting through to the end so i guess that that's it for now and if anything else happens i will come back to you thanks so much for listening see you next time